Hello, my name is Leilani, and today I'm going to do a curriculum review for the Applied Engineering's curriculum from Masterbooks. I am a former public and private school teacher, and I have been homeschooling for 10 years, and I do teach science at a homeschool co-op, so I have used many, many different textbooks for science. And I did use this one last year for one of the classes that I taught. So I'm going to give you a flip through and I am going to give you my honest opinion about this book. So let me just talk about the applied engineering curriculum. When I first saw applied engineering and, and with most people, when you first see that you're like, yay, engineering for seventh and eighth grade and ninth grade. That's awesome. Engineering. Well, it's not like your typical engineering. What it is is studies of God's design in nature. So what you're actually looking at how God designed animals and plants and things in nature in order to function. So it's the engineering of God's creation is what it actually is. And so when this curriculum is put together or was put together, they're going to be pulling from these three books right here. All right. And so I have those three books and I'm going to be talking about them as we go through the teacher guide and giving you a little show and tell with them. So starting off with the teacher's guide, it's going to have a, actually, let me just open the book up and kind of show you what we got here. It's going to give you a course description, which is really important to read if you get this curriculum right there. And then down here is the research paper that the students will put together if you choose to do the research paper, but that's part of the curriculum. The research paper actually comes from this book right here, which is the Men of Science, Men of God, and we'll talk about that a little bit later as we go through this. The next page is going to start your daily schedule. Now that's one really nice thing about these teacher guides that Masterbooks puts out, very consistent with giving you a very, very detailed schedule of what they think will work well for you. Now, of course, you're homeschooling, so you don't have to follow the schedule at all. It's going to give you assignments. It's going to give you things to read. It's going to keep track of dates. Sometimes, actually most of the time, you're going to get Friday off in this curriculum, which is kind of like catch up day. And also I will admit with this curriculum specifically, I, I did need to add some stuff to it some science activities. I threw some in there just to kind of have a little bit more fun with it. So when you start the actual teacher's guide, you're going to start off with going through just this book. And these worksheets are actually in order. So for example, let's just, I'll just give you a quick example. Okay, so first semester, first quarter. So you're gonna have the introduction in chapter one, microorganism, bacterial, micromotor. They're gonna tell you to read pages eight through 13 and 108, the appropriate answer section. Discovery of design, DOD, discovery of design intro and worksheet. So that makes sense, it's this book. <laughs> discovery of design. So they literally are telling you what to read. When it says chapter one, pages eight through 13. So you're going to read the introduction. You're going to read the microorganisms right here. And then you're going to start with the bacteria micro motor right there. And then it says 188. 188 is back here. Obviously it's in the back. That's actually going to be your answers to the questions that are given to you right here in the gray box and also duplicated in the worksheet. Here's your worksheet. So as you can see, this is day one. See, that was what I showed you earlier. So here's day one. So this is the introduction right here. These are the introduction questions right there. And then on this page over here, they're going to have more questions on that. And then down here, are the questions that are actually in the book. And I'm gonna, I, I wanna just 
kind of talk a little bit. At, see these questions right here, those questions right there. But I'm going to talk about these a little bit. These questions right here, you are not going to get from the material right here. So you are going to have to look at outside resources. They do give you some references. I do not know if these references answer these questions. I, I went on the internet with my kids and we looked them up. <laughs> That's how we found the answers to these questions. This book, each, each time you turn the page, is another topic. And they're divided up into sections. So you're going to have chapter one is going to be microorganisms. Chapter two is going to be insects. And let me just show you the table of contents. Here is chapter two with all the different insects. And so what's really cool is if you look at that, you can see that it's the insect and then what design they replicate. So we've got insects, robots, okay. Spiders, fiber optics. And you'll see how that just, that connects with modern day inventions and how it replicates the animal, but the animal was the inspiration which was created by God. The third chapter is gonna be flight, that's gonna be bats, which of course is sonars. And then the birds and the reptiles and owls and kingfish. Chapter four is underwater life, that's fun. Um, you don't have as many, there's plenty of underwater life. <laughs> It, really, there is, it, but they only picked a few. And then five, uh, chapter five is land animals. Chapter six is people. So, so body odor, uh, inspired odor. You know, bug repellent, insect repellent, DNA inspired computer memory, eardrum inspired earphones. So you get the the connection there. And then chapter seven is going to be vegetation. That's going to be like water lilies, Venus flytrap, which is always fun. See, this is the one which is nice. You can, you can get some of these, these plants to have around your house and observe them. And, um, chapter eight is going to be the non-living things such as opals and water flow, pulsar. And then of course the conclusion. Now what's interesting because when you're doing this curriculum for the for this book which is one third of the curriculum you, there's no science experiments and so you know as as a teacher that teaches at homeschool co-op that that puts a damper on things so i i like to have science experiments in my classroom it makes just life so much more fun and at home as well so i added a lot of science experiments it just activities and sometimes it was just observation like going out into nature and looking at insects or collecting insects or you know the venus flytrap fly like get a venus flytrap this book discovery of design actually is going to take you through day 103 so for the first 103 days with this curriculum there is no science activities but like I said, you can add to it. I mean, you're the, you're the teacher. Curriculum's just there to kind of help you out there. Take your kids outside and do some activities there. So when you get to day 104, that's when you're going to jump into this book. So before I move on, I want to talk about this book. I actually really like this book. This is something that I... I would probably get for my kids just to go through and read about and observe. So, and I do think that as a side note, that this curriculum is appropriate for seventh and eighth grade and ninth grade. Honestly, I do. I think it fits very, very well for that age group. I did teach middle school. And so, like I said, I do, I do think I wouldn't go lower than seventh grade. Okay. So moving on to day 104. So we've got the made in heaven book right here. And this is also another really good book, actually. And it's so, this is so interesting. It was actually written by Ray Comfort and uh, Jeffrey, I think you say Seto, Seto. And it's got some beautiful, beautiful pictures in here. So just to kind of show you it's having, you know, how nature inspired inventions and discoveries and the language is very beautiful. So you can kind of see some of these beautiful pictures. Here's the mussels. So how this part actually works is not 
like the other part. So the first time you turn to page, actually it's day 107. I forgot to mention that. There's tests and quizzes. And so on day 104, just so you know, it's um, a quiz. Discovery of Design Chapter 7 through 8 quiz and then a test. And the quizzes and tests are actually located in the back of the book. I forgot about those. Going to day 107. Start an inventor notebook. And so it's going to give you instructions on how to do that. And that's something that's going to go throughout the entire curriculum. And so when you get to day 108, I'm going to skip to the front, the suggested assignment. So it has you doing chapter one, Swim Like a Fish, in the Made in Heaven book. It says do worksheets, page 103 through 104. Now before I show you that, I also want to show you that the next day is actually going to get you into this book. So this book starts to get sprinkled in. It's going to get you kind of started thinking towards that research paper. But going back to day 108, so here is day 108 and it looks very, very different. It's just something that you're going to read. Now this one, it concepts and definitions, a lot of these actually are going to end up being science experiments and activities. So this one is going to teach you how to swim like a fish by moving your hand around. And then they have some questions that you answer. This one for day 112, cardboard, popsicle sticks, white glue, and rubber. Oh, this is going to be the body armor, and you're going to make a little strong you know, strong thing like that. So now we're getting into more science experiments and activities sprinkled through these weeks along with working on this guy right here. This, when you're working on this, you're just reading through it. So there's no worksheet in the teacher guide that goes with it. You're working on the research paper. Now the research paper, just, just kind of, I'm just going to read it to you, okay? Before the end of the course, a student is required to write a research paper on an inventor from Men of Science, Men of God. In this book, Dr. Henry Morris presents 101 biographies, which include Christian testimonies of scientists who believed in the Bible and in, pers in a personal creator God. Scientists who were pioneers and founding fathers of modern scientific disciplines, one can begin reading the book and exploring the inventors in anticipation of this paper. To give you kind of a look at what this book, it's, ve it's very thin, but it's not the most friendliest of reads. So they'll have the guy, right, and then like a little paragraph that talks about it. And then they go to the next guy. You know, same kind of idea. So chapter one is going to be your introduction. Chapter two is the test of experience. Chapter three, the foundations of modern scientist or science. And so then you've got these guys here for that. Chapter four is Age of Newton. These guys. Chapter five is right before Darwin. And you got these guys. And then chapter six is right after Darwin. Chapter seven, the modern period. And then chapter eight, the revival of creationism which I'm surprised they use the word creationism. People like to say creation science. Anyway, this book in general, like I said, it's not, it's not the most friendliest of reads, but it's a quick read. And they have you do a couple of scientists, and of course you're gonna pick, they're gonna pick out the one that they wanna do their little research paper on at the end. And of course, as you're going through these experiments and activities from the Made Through Heaven book, Right here, you're also going to have some quizzes in the back. And they're short answer. These are short answer quizzes. There is an answer key to all the questions in the entire book to make your life 10 times easier. That pretty much sums it up. When you're done, I will say the very, very last day of the book. Of course, you're going to have your research paper. You're going to have your inventor notebook. And then you're going to have a quiz on the last couple of chapters in Made in Heaven, and then you're going to have a chapter 1 through 32 test, and then you're done. You're done with the curriculum. Now that's if you follow it to a T and not add anything to it or take away it. That's, you know, of course, you're able to be flexible with the curriculum however you like. If you don't want to do the research paper or if you want to add in more experiments, kind of like what I did, we didn't do the research paper. I'll be honest, we did research papers with history, so we just, that's what we did. So we, you know, but it's here if you want to use it. So overall, when it came to this curriculum, um, 
you know, I love the, because, you know, it's, all they did was take three books and then build a curriculum around the three books. Very uni, unit study-esque. But I will say that I, I loved this book individually. And I also love the Made Through Heaven book individually. Those were good books. We had some fun with the experiments. But it was just like, it was kind of a different kind of approach to science in general for middle school. Um, it covered, you know, all the animals and it, it got you thinking about the construction and the creator behind all of it. So it's just, it was just a very different approach, very non-traditional, very unit study like. It was thorough. Now, I, I would say just something that I, I kind of like doing with my kids is actually, okay, I maybe mean, I'm just crazy like that, but I like dissections. I like actually looking at the anatomy and the function of the anatomy when it comes to animals and not just classifications. I guess maybe for some of you guys, you'll be like, yes, no dissections. So that's a perk for you guys. With that being said, um, I, those are my opinions about it. I mean, I would rec I would recommend it, but I would also I would also say it's not what you think it is based on the title because I do, like I said earlier, the title is deceiving and I, you got to know what you're getting yourself into. And then if you know what you're getting yourself into and you're happy with that, then it's a great curriculum as long as you know what you're, because otherwise you're going to be disappointed. And I think a lot of, I've heard a lot of people say that they were disappointed when they got the curriculum because they expected something different based on the title. So with that being said, that's it. That's all of my review for master books and their middle school applied engineering curriculum. So let me know if you liked this. And if you want to do some more, we're doing paleontology this year. Whoop, whoop with my, fourth grader I keep wanting she's getting old we're doing it I'm doing it with the upper elementary class at the homeschool co-op and I'm super excited I wish I lived near a dinosaur dig but I don't uh, dinosaur world I live near but it's not the same thing as a real dinosaur dig so yeah <laughs> let me know if you want to review on that one too and thank you guys so much for watching this video and I will see you later bye